Hello everybody, I'm Nick and in this video I'm going to show you how you can enable true parallelization for all of your tests in your .NET test projects. In this video we're going to take a look at how we can do this using XUnit because, well, that's the testing library I prefer and it's also the most used testing library in .NET. Now the reason why I'm making this video is because what I just said, enable parallelization for all of your tests, no matter where they are, is actually very tricky to do in XUnit. In fact, Technically, it is impossible, but in this video, we're going to see how we can do that. I'm going to explain why it is a problem and has been a problem until now, and what we can do to effectively remove that problem and have all of our tests run parallel. This will greatly increase the execution speed of your tests. However, there are a few caveats you should know about. If you like a lot of content and you want to see more, make sure you subscribe. And for more training, check out my courses on domtrain.com. All right, so let me show what I have here. I have a simple test project here using XUnit, and this is not just for unit tests, this is for any type of test. Now, to fully understand where I'm coming from and why I'm saying that this is a problem, you have to understand by default how XUnit runs your tests. To do that, I'm going to add a few things. First, I'm going to add the constructor and I'm going to inject the iTest output helper. This will allow me to store it in a field and then use it in my tests to print something into the output of the test itself. Because if I say print to the console, the console as a concept doesn't exist for your tests, so you won't really see anything printed anywhere. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to add over here a field with a GUI that is initialized when the class itself is initialized. This will become important in a second. Now, if I go ahead and I just add a single test using the fact attribute, and as you're going to see, what I'm going to have here is a two second delay and then the print of a string version of this code. So if I go ahead and I say, hey, go ahead and run these tests, what I'm going to get is a test passing after two seconds and then a good printed in the console. Very straightforward. Now, what I'm going to do next is actually duplicate those tests. So I'm going to have test one and test two, and I'm going to go ahead and run all of my tests again at the same time. As you see, only one is running at a time. First one, second one. Very weird. Now, let me do something else. Let me just take everything in here in my test class and duplicate it. Say tests two, for example, and only leave the second test here and only leave the first test here. If I do that, and again, same logic, and I go back to my unit tests and I say run both tests in that assembly at the same time, then watch what happens. They are running at the same time. This is because Tests within what XUnit calls a collection will run sequentially, but tests between multiple collections will run in parallel. So that's why tests here and tests too are running in parallel, because by default, classes are treated as collections in XUnit and they will run in parallel of each other. This is mostly done as a default behavior to prevent any sort of state clashing. But the interesting thing about XUnit is that even if I have this test too, in this single class, which is a single collection, then if I run it as you're going to see here in the result, I'm going to get GUID C57 and so on from test one, but I'm gonna get 057 and something else from test two. This is because also by default, XUnit will create one instance of your class per test you run. So if I had three, I'm gonna get three GUIDs. Now this behavior can actually be overridden in a couple of ways. The easiest one is by saying, class feature over here. And the class feature will allow me to effectively instantiate this class only once for all of my tests, so I can carry state from one test to the other. This is something I do not recommend for unit tests because you might end up with clashes between the tests and you don't control how they run. So one might run before another and if you expect them to run in a specific sequence, well, you're gonna be in trouble. But what this feature allows me to have is to have a state that is carried over from test to test. So instead of saying GUID ID over here, I can inject the object I just created over here. So I can say state state, and I can have a private read only state object over here, which is being injected and then carried over. And if I do that, then I can go and say state dot ID both here and here. And if I run both tests, now again, they will run sequentially, but what I'm going to get is the ID you're going to see here is the same for both because the state is carried over between both of my tests. Now, this is quite the long intro, but I had to explain how XUnit behaves because you have to understand that if you do the trick I'm going to show you to parallelize all of your tests, you have to worry about how your state is handled. And state can be carried over even within a single class or multiple classes with a collection feature. So I'm gonna go ahead and enable what I'm going to show you right now 
everywhere, but instead be very careful. And if you do not use collection fixtures and you have what we had in the beginning, so I'm gonna go ahead and just quickly remove this from over here and change this both back to IDs, then this is the best case scenario for you because the state isn't really transferred and each individual test has its own state, which makes it very easy for you to parallelize. Now, by default, XUnit doesn't have behavior that allows you to basically say, within this collection of fixture, within this class, run these two tests in parallel. They will always run sequentially. But the fix for that is actually incredibly simple. Now, before I move on, I'd like to let you know that we just launched the massive six-hour course on DOM train called From Zero to Hero, Test-Driven Development in C Sharp. That course will take you from knowing nothing about testing in TDD and get you to a point where you fully understand the concept and you have all the technique and knowledge to apply it on any C Sharp code base. It is authored by Guy Ferreira, who has an excellent YouTube channel, link in the description, but he's also someone who I work with personally in my previous company, and I can 100% vouch for him. He really, really knows the topic, and he actually changed the way I see the topic as well and the way I teach it. I believe it's a must-know for any developer, and the first 500 of you can use discount code TDD20 and click the link in the description to claim it at checkout. These do tend to go very, very quickly, and I don't renew them later, so if you want to buy it, then buy it now. Now, back to the video. Video. All we're going to do is we're going to go into NuGet and I'm going to search for test framework. And what this will do the moment I add this NuGet package, and I'm not touching my code at all, I'm just installing the NuGet package. If I go ahead and I now say run all tests, as you're going to see, they both run in parallel, even though they're within the same collection. That's because the NuGet package already has all the necessary information and wiring to enable this functionality by default. You don't have to say anything or do anything to enable it. Just install it and you're there. Now you might be wondering, okay, that's great, but what if I wanna disable this feature? Because now the way this is implemented, all of my tests everywhere will be paralyzed. So how can I override this? Well, you can by attaching the disable parallelization attribute to your collection. So if you go ahead and you do that, then if I say run all, then I bring back the default behavior, the previous behavior, and everything will run one after the other. The way state is carried over doesn't change. That is still the same way as it was before. What changes is the way the tests will be executed. And that's because if we take a look into the library itself, if I go over here, nuget packages, and then the assembly, what's happening is there's an implementation of the parallel test framework on top of the X unit test framework. And we have a different method runner over here, which will alter the way methods are executed and the same with the class runner as well. So you can see that these are the two biggest things that have changes. Things like the assembly runner or the collection runner don't have any changes, but the big ones are class and method runner, which will change the default behavior, which is what we want to do in the first place. Now, please be very careful. This can definitely speed up your application because you can actually use more resources of your system and run more tests at the same time. So you can go from something like a few seconds to a few milliseconds. However, you can have state issues. So you want to make sure that there's no clashing happening if your tests are running parallel like that. If they do not implement or have a class feature, then you shouldn't have a problem because the state should be decoupled anyway, but you never know. So please use this with caution, but I'm going to put a link in the description and please do give the project a star on GitHub. It is a great, great project. But now I want to know from you, did you have this issue and did you end up solving it a different way with XUnit? Leave a comment down below and let me know. Well, that's all I have for you for this video. Thank you very much for watching and as always, keep coding.